Hey everyone, so in this video, I will be showing you a few vulnerabilities that we had covered while using Viber. In front of you now is our research setup. We basically created a rogue access point which we called test by taking advantage of Windows 7's virtual Wi-Fi mini port adapter. We then connected our phone, in this case user 1, to this network which allowed us to monitor all the traffic being sent and received by user 1. User 2 was connected outside of the network to the GSM and was used to exchange data over Viber with user 1. For more detailed explanation on how exactly to set this kind of network up, you can check out our other video on the WhatsApp location vulnerability by clicking on the link on your screen. So let's jump right in. So on the left here, we have Wireshark, and on the right, we have Network Miner. Both have been set to monitor the test network. And up first, we have User1 receiving a doodle from User2. Now, what you should see is this image appear in Network Miner to show you that we were able to capture it and reconstruct it to see exactly what was sent uh, to user 1 and there it is. Uh, next user 1 will be receiving an image file from user 2 so we were also able to see that. Um, now user 1 will be receiving a location from user 2 and now user 1 will be sending a location to user 2. So both sending and receiving a location was able to be captured and reconstructed. Um, last, we will be receiving a video from user 2. Um, now to do this, uh, we have to use NetWitness. So what we're going to do is save the Wireshark PCAP file. Um, which we'll do in just a second and open up NetWitness so now we're going to create a collection and then we're going to input that saved PCAT file into this collection so now we open that up we go to the content and you're going to look at the MP4 content we're going to click on the thumbnail there which should open it up and we're going to scroll down and you see the video right there. Um, I will open this up for you so you can get a better look at it. Uh, we'll just save it to another location. And we'll open that up. And there you go. So we were also able to capture a video received by user 1 um, over the network. So a couple of days after we completed this research, we want to go back and manually examine uh, some of the links to the items that you just saw earlier in the video, specifically the doodle image, the camera image, and the video, as those were all stored on Viber server and were captured when our device went to retrieve them from their server. So we want to take a look at these links and see if the data was still on Viber server, whether it was encrypted, you know, whether it could still be viewed, those types of things. So let me walk you through that right now. If you take a look at the first link here, you'll notice that that's the same doodle image and it is still there on their server. Uh, next, we'll take a look at the camera image and you'll notice that is still there. And finally, the video which is also still there so what this means is that the data is stored on Viber's server in an unencrypted manner there is also no authentication method um, used so that anybody who has access to these links can look at this data retrieve this data and do whatever they want with it in fact um, we were doing the same research about a week ago we were sending and receiving images through Viber and those videos and images that were captured and found on Viber's server are actually still there today. Um, you know we did the same thing we looked at the links manually in Wireshark we clicked on them and we're still able to find that data stored there. So these are all the vulnerabilities that we found when looking into Viber and thank you for watching.